presentation is made that the quality of legal services to be performed is greater than the quality of legal services performed by other lawyers. Online at CordellCordell.com. CordellCordell.com. The following is an America Matters Media production. The views expressed do not necessarily represent those of the station or its advertisers, although we think they should. But that's the opinion of America Matters Media. Good afternoon and welcome to Sheriff Jerry and Friends, and I am Story County Sheriff Gerald Antonoro. If you'd like to get involved with today's show, whether you're listening on air or online at americamatters.us, you can call in toll-free at 844-790-TALK. That's 844-790-8255. Joining us today via the the miracle of technology is none other than Leo Zaki, former gubernatorial candidate for the state of California and a member of the Zaki Farm family. How you doing, Leo? I'm doing fantastic and I'm also currently a gubernatorial candidate for 2026. Excellent. And I, I I did know that. I just wasn't quite sure how to massage all of that together. But uh, And we're glad to have you running for that office. And, and I'll tell you, there's a couple things we want to jump into real quick, but uh, feel free to, to chime in on anything you want. But I want to come back because it ties right back in to what you and I are going to be talking about, Leo. So... Uh, just to start off with, let the, the listeners know that um, uh, this week and next, we're working on transitional shows gearing up for next year, when Sheriff Jerry will become Farmer Jerry, and uh, we'll still be broadcasting right here on a matter America Matters, and we will be talking about farm life and farming, from apiaries to wheat production, and everything in between. Uh, we'll talk about food and healthy eating and try to do a little bit to reconnect fo- folks with where their food actually comes from. And some of you out there might be surprised to find out it's not on aisle five at the local grocery store <laughs> or from Wendy McBurger Mart. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll take you through building our new farm located in south central Missouri as we do do it. So uh, I'm sure we're going to sprinkle in a bit of conservative politics from time to time, just because that's the kind of guy I am and things kind of get me going a little bit. And uh, so um, that's, that's kind of the, the onset, but our first lead and news story and, and Leo, I'd love to hear your take on this. Um, I read a story this week where there was a bit of an outcry of a hunter who butchered a deer in front of a school. That's the big headlines. Hunter butchers deer in front of school. I mean, and it, quite a, quite a commotion. Um, now, now this happened in Pennsylvania. Okay. And people can be a little bit strange in Pennsylvania from what oh, I'm yeah, told. <laughs> but, uh, you know, l- let's give a little bit of background on this. This was a middle school, so the kids would have been, you know, 11, 14-ish. They're not little kids. It's not It's not the elementary school where they're thinking, oh, no, it's Bambi. You know, these are li- kids are a little bit older. This is this is western Pennsylvania, and there's a lot of, a lot of hunters in the area, things like that. Um, and... As it was, uh, as the story depicts anyway, the the guy who butchered the deer uh, wasn't doing this for shock value or anything. He had one tree on his property, and that was the only tree he could hang the deer from. So whether he did it because he wanted to do his own butchering or because he couldn't afford to take it to a shop to have it done. I don't know. Um, It's his deer. Go ahead, Leo. It's his deer. It's his property. He's got every right to do that. I mean, and the reality is, is that's how people have been doing it. Well, since we were still living in caves. Um, I mean, there's, there's not much different in the technique of breaking down a, an animal like that. And so the school happens to be across from where he lives. I mean, is what it is. 
Well, and, and that's exactly where I was going to go with this. I mean, when I was a kid, um, you know, 50 years ago, we'd have been taking a field trip across the street to watch him do it mm -hmm. and learn how to do it, especially if he knew what he was doing, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'll throw a little of my own history in there. You know, my wife and I have been married just over five and a half years. And uh, when uh, we first got married, my, my stepdaughter, I mean, she's my daughter, but just for clarification, my stepdaughter, she was about the same age as, as these kids who would have been watching this deer get butchered up. She'd never been around any of this stuff before. And um, we did a couple of uh, runs on chickens that year mm -hmm. and she was out there with me first time she was a little bit standoffish but inquisitive and and watching the process and uh, I'll tell you second time second batch she jumped right in the middle of it we turned it into an anatomy lesson she learned yeah. all about it how we take care of them how we we process them as as humanely as possible and and the purpose that they serve so mm -hmm. um you know, now she's a teenage girl and, you know, who knows what interests a teenage girl. They don't even know. But, uh, <laughs> you know, at that age, that's a good age to teach kids about food and, and where it comes from. Yeah. So, um, you know, and, and we're going to circle back to that in just a second, Leo. But I want to talk about this particular story with you. Um, well, I'll tell you what, we've, we've only got a, a couple of minutes and I don't know um, how far that conversation is going to go. So, so uh, let's, I'll tell you what, let's talk about a little bit of your background, which we're going to get into more further into the show, but you've had experiences around critters and where <laughs> food comes from. Uh, to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my family had the largest poultry uh, operation in the West coast and we were the largest poultry producer in, uh, on the West Coast, and we're the largest privately owned employer in California. So I grew up around the chicken and turkey ranches and uh, going through the slaughterhouse and the processing plant um, and the cook facilities. And, you know, I've seen it all. It's, you know, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not a glamorous thing, but it's, you know, you want to eat. This is how it happens. Um, and, yeah, and you have to remember, I mean, the animals that are raised on farms to be processed into food, uh, the only reason they came into existence was because they were going to wind up on your plate at some point. Um, and, and, you know, when it comes to hunting deer, uh, or any other wildlife like that, uh, I mean, I know, I know there are people that hunt for sport, but you know, these folks, they don't waste the meat. Uh, a lot of the times, like if they don't keep the meat, they don't want it. They'll wind up donating it somewhere. Uh, and it can get turned into dog food or, or it'll be cut up and donated to a homeless shelter. Um, or, you know, for folks who really like game meat, um, you know, that's, that's, that's another thing. Like you can process it yourself and then you got the pelt, you can do whatever you want with it. And people are very, you know, very capable of doing that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's, it, and I do want to tell you though, cause we're coming up on the first break already, but we have a couple of folks joining us today. They're pretty regular listeners to the show. Um, and Bob is a former, uh, butcher, uh, worked in a lot of stores, uh, in the meat department. And when he found out you were going to be on the show, he told me that he has probably sold millions of dollars of the Zaki <laughs> farm products over the course of his career. And then, uh, we've got some other folks that tune in regularly and they said, Oh yeah, we love Zaki chickens. They were the best chickens ever. Right. So, uh, your, the family has fans still. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. yeah so uh with that though we are all right up against the break i expect that the music is going to start oh there it is just like magic so we're going to be back with more in just a moment with leo zaki Charbecue the Butcher's Kitchen would like to thank every customer for your loyalty and continued support through these challenging times. Call for takeout and delivery of rib tips, brisket, ahi tuna, roasted veggies, and much more. Charbecue is open from 11 to 7, Monday through Saturday, and delivers hot food safe and healthy. Call 499-5855 for details. 499-5855 Charbecue, as featured on diners, drive-ins, and dives. Get real. Get into Charbecue Reno. 
At a proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, we've been accomplishing happy feet for over 30 years. We offer a various range of shoe styles and sizes for both men and women. From all-season shoes and orthotics to work boots and safety shoes, our professional and reliable staff possesses the knowledge to help you find the proper shoes to fit your needs. Hard to fit? Hard to find? A proper fit footwear is here to give our customers happy feet. We make people aware of potential foot problems as we're sizing their feet, suggesting the right art support and gutting them to the proper shoes for their needs. Stop by a proper fit footwear at 4001 South Virginia Street in the Reno Town Mall today and allow the owner Mike Jones and our fabulous staff to find the perfect pair of shoes tailored to your specific needs. A proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, the home of happy feet where comfort and your feet meet. The Delta and Bonanza Saloons in Virginia City are simply elegant. Imagine ascending the grand staircase and being surrounded by the Victorian elegance and grandeur of the historic banquet rooms. Original crystal chandeliers, mahogany bars, and oak dance floors highlight the eloquently appointed spaces. A truly romantic and unique setting for your wedding, banquets, or holiday parties. Detailed ceremony and menu planning ensures your special event is a memorable occasion. With just one call to Jesse at 775-847-0789, all of your arrangements will be handled by their experienced staff with your every expectation in mind including cakes flowers photography videography music and party amenities complete ceremony and reception packages are available as well as their famous themed weddings since 1865 the delta and bonanza saloons guests have come from every state in the union now it's your turn no event is too large or too small let the delta and bonanza saloons plan your next incredible event call jesse at 775-847-0789 Hey everyone, Dave Escher here introducing you to our new store, the Nevada Marketplace in the Reno Town Mall. Anchored with the Buy Nevada First gift shop, we've added over 60 micro shops, giving locals a place to set up their dream store. We are now 20,000 square feet strong, supporting over 250 local merchants with all things made in Nevada and more. We have more locals in one place than anywhere in the state, ready to help you find that perfect gift. We're open every day with easy parking at Peckham and Virginia. Go to buynevadafirst.com, your source for all things local. Are you shy and don't want to talk on the air? Text us your questions or comments to 775-237-2266. Now back to the show. Welcome back, folks. We're here with Leo Zaki of Zaki uh, Farms. Zaki Farms, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure. I don't want to. Don't want to put it out there wrong. <laughs> so, uh, but before we get into the whole farming and raising of, of food and everything, uh, Leo, I wanna I wanna throw something out there and get your take on it that I read in the news uh, just recently. Um, like I said it is it is from your state, and I'm sure you're probably aware of it as soon as I throw it out there. But uh, I saw where uh, Governor Gruesome wants to give out uh, upwards to a quarter of a million dollars to each person of african-american descent who is in the state of california and according to the story um gruesome's task force proposed that each californian who is the descendant of free or enslaved african-americans living in the u.s prior to the end of the 19th century should be given the money so basically, any person, any black person who's a descendant of an African American prior to 1900, um, and that's going to have a price tag in total. At least what they're throwing out is about uh, 570 billion with a B dollars um, in the state of California. So uh, you know, a couple of questions: What's your thoughts on this, and how are you all going to pay for it? Uh, well, if I could swear, I would, uh, because this is a terrible, terrible concept and a terrible waste of money, and it's horrifically unfair to the people of California. I mean, you want to go back to the fact that, number one, California wasn't even a slave state. Uh, on top of that, how, how do you get to dictate who has to pay that money? Uh, you know, I think the math is something uh, that works out that's like – Less than less than ten percent of people in the United States, you know, have some connection to slavery at any point. Some some ridiculously low number. It was like even back even back during the Civil War era, only two percent of the population owned slaves. Um, 
So California wasn't a slave state. What about the people that immigrated to this country after that, after the Civil War, after slavery? That uh, you know, and how do you know they didn't own slaves? It's 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 bogus. It's BS. And this is just a dog whistle to galvanize more low intelligence, uh, low information voters on the left, uh, and just another attempt at grabbing the the black vote. I think it's 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 BS, man. It's not right. And and at that price tag, I mean, California is already three point two trillion dollars in debt. So we're just going to tack on another half a trillion dollars. Like we, we can't even pay. We're at over a trillion dollars in debt with um, uh, with pensions here in California. Yeah, I just heard something about a, a bailout of some pension fund. I don't remember if it was California or not, but it wouldn't wouldn't surprise me. I think it had something to do with the the docks or something. But uh, um, yeah, and and this one it, it, it's really a head scratcher because I, I hear this having having lived most of my life around uh, Native American tribes, you know the the Indian tribes. You know, I, I always hear them arguing over what degree of of blood you have to be to be accepted as a tribal member so are we going to see the same thing on this you know is it are you a quarter blood an eighth blood or are we going to go down to a 16th or 132nd or you know pocahontas style one 674th <laughs> you know whatever whatever it was right. if, you know um how how much of a descendant must you be and of bigger concern um is that and and i guess this is probably why i really wanted to bring it up with you is california seems to think that they can rule the country and whatever california does i mean it triggers things yeah. in a lot of other states and we all know that the federal government is is hot on the trail of of this type of action too yeah. and um it just it, it's it's crazy so unfortunately, California leads the way in so many very wrong decision making. And uh, when we've seen this take place with, uh, for example, trucking laws, uh, trucking laws that were implemented in California have now become federal. You see this in emission standards that started in California have now become federal. Uh, the minimum wage thing that started in California is now becoming federal. Uh, it, it's just it's ridiculous that the the. But California imposes and then gets adopted in in you know when once the, the U.S. adopts it, then the rest of the world watches it. So that's why California is such a, a an important place, and uh, we make up what is it like one ninth of the population in this country. Uh, so I mean that's there's obviously understanding as to why there's so much influence, but also the propaganda machine that is Hollywood and the big tech that uh, is located here plays a big role into that. So I, I'd like to see. Starts bringing us back into the whole uh, farming circle because they've got uh, there's a, a case going on right now that I'm I'm watching to see what happens with it is you know California imposed standards on the pork industry to where if yeah. I'm a if I'm a, a pig farmer in Iowa but I want to sell my product in the state of California you know right. they've got to have a penthouse suite with beachfront right. property and, you know <laughs> a sub, couple safe zones you know yeah there's safe spaces and all that yeah no, you it's know ridiculous I mean it's so not because like I said California is you know it's it's one ninth of the population. That's one ninth of the U S market. That's, that's a huge number of people. You know, we're talking just shy of 40 million and declining because of the stupid rules and regulations that get passed here in California. It's not right to these producers to take away such a chunk of the market. And then their only option, you know, they, they come down to two options. Well, it's, it's hard to, to export it uh, for a profit because of all the logistics that are involved and you know, it's, you're talking about fresh food and that has a shelf life. And when you freeze product, it loses half its value. So, I mean, you're destroying the, any, any ability for these people to make a, a profit. And then their other option is to just call their stuff before it even gets to market. And then they've lost all their, their investment up until that point. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And we saw a lot of that during the apocalypse where uh, a lot of cattle farmers, pig farmers, sheep farmers were just, they were just, destroying their animals because they couldn't get them processed and, and right. transported. And that's, that's the worst part. I mean, think about it. These these animals came into existence to serve a purpose, and because of the way the government is dictating rules and regulations, they're unable to fill that fulfill that purpose, and it truly does become a life wasted, and it's sad, and it's, it's not something that anybody in, in agriculture enjoys doing. 
Now, Leo, just to, to give a little bit of background, I, I heard a program a while back where you and your grandmother were on with Eddie, and, and it was I think it was during the campaign, and you were talking about the, the regulations that the state of California put on, mm-hmm. on the family farm and everything. Tell us, uh, give us a little bit of the background on that. Well, uh, there's a lot of California doesn't make it fun for business in general. And uh, even more so nowadays with this whole, uh, you know, myth with this this global warming and and the cow farts are killing the planet. uh, It's not helping us in any manner. So the the increases in in utility price hikes, uh, the, the cost of corn that went up because of the ethanol mandates that Obama put into place. I mean, that that literally killed. Uh, the second largest uh, poultry producer in the United States and uh, was a leading contributing factor in destruction of my family's business uh, with ethanol. But things that were arbitrarily limiting in California, like our line speed, how fast we could process our birds. Um, So we were limited to 140 birds a minute here in California. And in other states, they don't have that arbitrary legislation. So they're able to process birds at 210 birds a minute. And then when you can when you compound the factor of, of uh, minimum wage, so in California it's fifteen dollars, but let's say uh, Louisiana for example, where it's seven seventy five. So in one shift, I'm being outproduced by fifty percent, and I'm being underspent by fifty percent. So that those combining factors uh, are really devastating to a business when you when your market is is you know the whole country and even international. It became so cost prohibitive in California that it was cheaper to produce on the other side of the country and then freight it on a truck to California where they could beat me on price at the grocery store down the street. You know, and, and that was something I wanted to ask you about because I heard uh, earlier today when you were on with Eddie um, on the, the noon program, um, I, I, Eddie asked you what you figured or what you saw as the the biggest issue, and you you in our facing our country, and you had mentioned that uh, globalization was at least a, a part of it, um, and and I wanted to ask you specifically about that because so much of our food industry, especially when it comes to animals, say it, I mean we're we're growing them here, but how can it possibly be more cost effective to ship them overseas to be broken down and processed? and sent back it all packaged up for the nice and pretty for the grocery store well uh i mean to clarify it's it's the globalists not so much globalization uh right the right. various people like the build a bird group world economic forum george soros bill gates klaus schwabs um but when you talk about shipping product to be broken down i mean i'm i'm i, I i'm sure that's happened my family hasn't done it where they would we never had to do that and I wouldn't find it very cost effective. And the only way you could do that is if the product was to be frozen or some, or, or became a cooked product and then became frozen because uh, to ship across the Pacific, for example, that's a two week voyage. Uh, we used to ship hot dogs to Hong Kong, uh, for example. So, uh, I mean, it, it doesn't make any logical sense. Plus then there's a time and that it's important. It has to get taken off, put on a truck, taken to a plant, unloaded, processed and reloaded, ship back to the port, get on the boat, go back across. It doesn't make sense. But um, for for 20, like here's a good example. 25% of all the, the chicken that's in the United States is imported from Brazil. And it's not that we can't produce enough here because we do. We, we produce more than we need. It's because uh, it's far more cheaper to produce it down there and put it on a boat frozen and then sell it here in the United States. Well, that sure affects your... Uh your freshness factor, that's for sure. Uh, having having raised a bunch of turkeys, I just processed uh, upwards to 50 turkeys for this last Thanksgiving, and huge difference in the taste, throwing it out from the grocery store or raising it there in your backyard oh, and yeah. getting it fresh. So, But with that, there's the music. we got to take a break. There's more to come. Stick with us, folks. We'll be right back.
This is Peter from Nevada Real Estate Radio. I talk about the subjects that help you as a home buyer, seller, or investor. Some people might just focus on the negative things, so guess where they're going? We do it differently. We focus on the positive aspects of today's real estate opportunities. You might have to navigate through some murky waters, but we're here to help you achieve success. The Nevada Real Estate Radio, Thursdays, 3 p.m., 93.7 FM, Nevada Real Estate Radio. Hi, I'm Dr. Dennis Patterson. I'm the founder and owner of Nevada Advanced Pain Specialists. In Nevada Advanced Pain Specialists, we take a comprehensive approach to treating patients with chronic pain in the greater Reno, Tahoe area. We believe in the biopsychosocial model. This means we use multiple disciplines such as massage therapy, physical therapy, behavioral health, and medical treatments to treat your chronic pain. A plan of care is tailor-made for each individual patient. We always recommend conservative care first, but offer minimally invasive treatments when necessary. We are your one-stop shop. If it hurts, we can help. We pride ourselves in providing passionate care and making you feel welcome and understood. We are located in Reno and in Sparks, so give us a call to schedule a new patient consult at 284-8650. Again, that's 284-8650. Or visit our website at nvadvancepain.com. We hope you choose Nevada Advanced Pain Specialist to be your center for injury rehabilitation. nvadvancepain.com, 284-8650. Businesses, writers, check this out. Go to LRPNV.com to get your printing, publishing, and professional services today. Need a virtual office? A place to receive and forward your mail with professional address and suite number for your business? Someone to answer your telephones? Want to rent a conference room for only $15 an hour? What about that book you've been wanting to have printed? LRP Printing and Business Center can do it for you. And they have a professional assistant on-site daily, Monday through Friday. Just call 775-356-1004. Need copies, business cards, invoices, books, booklets, or graphic design to help brand you or your business, just call 775-356-1004 or go to LRPNV.com. With a great selection of new and used books, you can get your printing done and a book to entertain you in your time off. And don't forget, you could have your business sponsoring the Bookhound Radio Show, just like Andrew Martoni, author of Little Man on the Map, does every week. Just go to LRPNV.com. That's LRPNV.com or call 775-356-1004. They'll provide solutions for your business and writing projects. Hi, this is Eddie Floyd. Let me tell you about my favorite non-profit public charity, Wynema Wild Horse Sanctuary, located on the Forsyth Ranch in Hallelujah Junction area. And please go to www.wynemaranch.com. That's W-Y-N-E-M-A ranch.com. To join the conversation, call 844-790-TALK. That's 844-790-8255. Now, back to the show. Welcome back, folks. We're here with Leo Zaki. And, Leo, i got to share with you during the break, Judy sends in a message that says, Good show. I've always been a Zaki Farms fan. And their family was raised in and and. They lived in Southern California and uh, talked to a bunch of folks who, I mean, they, they swear by the product you guys produced. And even when I was, was looking up online a little bit, to, you know, just to get a little bit more knowledgeable about uh, the, the family business, um, one of the things I found, and this, this was not a uh, Zaki Farms publication, this was third party posting that said all of Zaki Farms products are antibiotic free and produced in the state of California. Zaki Farms is best known for its high standards for animal welfare, employees, and quality of its products. So there you go. That's, that's what's out there in the world about uh, the farm products and uh you know i I know that uh it just becomes overbearing to try and keep up with some of that stuff but but uh you know what what led to that just regulations feed costs i mean i know you talked about uh, the production costs and and bringing it in from other countries being cheaper and everything but um was was there just no way to keep that up uh well I mean, the California, the way California legislated to us, plus the utility price hikes, the labor 
costs, the arbitrary things that we had to, to put up with, like uh, the line speeds, like I mentioned, uh, and even things when it came to expanding our operations. Like if we wanted to expand and build more ranches, we would have to buy the land and then say, after we've pay, bought the land and paid the taxes, then say we're going to build turkey or chicken houses on it. But let's say somebody lived five miles down the road and they complained to the city and said, oh, well, uh, we don't want that there because like not in my backyard, sort of, so to speak, uh, because of the dust or the smell. Well, that's it. All it took is one person and uh, you're, you can't build your uh, turkey houses or chicken houses. And now you have land that is now known that it can't be used for that. And now you have to find a way to offload it. So it's more, it's more capital that you have to put out there. That's just tied up in, in BS. So, I mean, that's just one, that's one thing that, that, that really hurt us. Um, but, uh, but right now, I mean, the USDA uh, is trying to pass regulations on contract growers. And for those of you who don't know what a, cr a contract grower is, it's somebody who's uh, has their own turkey or chicken ranches or, or it doesn't matter. It could be pigs or whatever. Um, that's not owned by the company and the company pays them to raise the animals. And they're trying to, uh, they're trying to change it so that, Every contract grower gets the same uh, the same contract regardless of performance, um, because right now it's based on performance. Like if if one contract grower produces higher quality, uh, you know, birds or or whatever animals, then they would earn more. If they produce more and at higher quality, they would earn more money as opposed to someone who performs less. It's so it's it's an incentive destroyer, uh, and that's more of a Marxist socialist agenda that you've seen take place in other countries yeah and, and we've touched on that a little bit in the past on different shows when we've ventured off into to this realm i mean it's it's pretty cutthroat from from what i've seen about the the grower industry I and mean, with the the bonuses that they're given if they get the best return on their feed and or, or you know what the the best return for whatever their input is uh to the point where some of these growers going around and sabotaging each other um yeah that's a real thing that is yeah, a real thing yeah, pretty bad. But, you know, um, I've I've got uh, some friends over there in Northern California that uh, they they had a small cattle operation. Um, and I, I guess this was a fairly recent uh, change in California regulatory uh, processes um, because it's just been within the last year, 18 months, they finally threw up their hands and they were they were no we're near as big as uh, your your family's business. They're just a small farmer, but um, had a, had some cows there, maybe a few dozen cows. Um, not quite sure how big, but it wasn't a real big operation. Um, and the state came in and said, "Okay, we've we've got to do a, an assessment of the slope of your land and where the waterways are, and then we're going to, uh, you know, project how much waste comes from your your uh, farting cows, and you know how many cow pies are going to fall on the pasture and urine, and how much could ultimately end up in the the water system, and and they were going to assess fees or taxes on the basis of that. So uh, ridiculous." Yeah, have have you heard of those types of things, or or how would that have? I mean, chickens produce a lot of waste. I mean, it, it's kind of hard to believe, but when you've got thousands of birds, uh, it builds up in a hurry. Yeah, but you know, the cool thing about the we, we were actually able to sell the chicken litter. We would use a uh, uh, rice holes uh, was was something that we would use a lot as our chicken litter, and then uh, once we were done with that flock. Uh, then we clean out the house. We could turn around and sell that because it's actually really great fertilizer. It's very nitrogen rich. So um, that we were able to sell that, believe it or not. Um, but, but what's happening is it's the overregulation. I mean, how how ridiculous is that? They got to measure cow farts and cow pies and cow urine and it's it's all this arbitrary stuff that has a has a cost attached to it. So that's that understand. They pass this regulation, but the but the expense is always placed on the farmer. To, to cover the cost of somebody coming out there and, and taking these measurements, whether it's from the state or it's, whether it's put on, on the, uh, on the farm or the farmer. Uh, so those costs have to get offset somehow. And that gets placed on the final product, which winds up being on your store shelf. Um, and it's, it's actually destroying the dairy industry here in California and the dairies are packing up and leaving. So that whole happy cows come from California, California cheese, it's the cheese. That's going to be a thing of the past if, if these things don't get turned around quickly. 
Yeah, matter of fact, I just was reading about some dairies that were closing down in California because those those cows are no longer happy, and I guess they're making sour cream instead of <laughs> buttermilk or something. I don't know, but <laughs> but yes, well, I expect to see catalytic converters or something on the backsides of cows and pastures over there before long. Yeah, right. <laughs> Is that why there's a big theft of catalytic converters going on? That it may be. It could be the cattle farmers I seen any cows with them with them on. So. <laughs> well, it, and it's crazy. Um, is is your family completely out of the farming industry now, or do you still have fingers in here and there somewhere? Unfortunately, we closed our doors completely in January of 2019. Um, it just it wasn't viable, and it was crippling us financially. And uh, we lost a lot. I mean, we lost a lot of our our you know, everything that my great great grandfather started and my grandparents built and, and worked extremely hard for, and, uh, you know, and all the stuff I tried, you know, I did to help keep the companies float a lot for as long as I could. I mean, longer than it should have been. Uh, it, it just, we it killed us. And, you know, with that went thousands of jobs in the most impoverished parts of California. And, and also for everybody out there who grew up on it went, you know, a household name and a quality product. And uh, I hate to say it, and uh, but the quality of poultry, I've just seen it stores it nowadays, and it's it's so subpar, and it breaks my heart. And you know, and so many people just are so disinterested and don't care. They're like, oh well, chicken is chicken is chicken, and I can tell you, it's not. Um, you know, what you put in is what you get out, and we were we were focused on putting you know quality first because if it wasn't good enough for our family, it wasn't good enough for yours, and the gold standard in poultry has gone away when we left the market. Well, and, and I'll absolutely second that and, and agree with that. Like I said, nowhere near the scale. I, you know, I might raise 50 to a hundred chickens a year, but uh, loads up the freezer pretty good. And um, you know, the, the quality of that, I mean, I, I don't, buy chicken in the grocery store anymore because of that um you know but when i if i go out to eat and i get a piece of chicken at a restaurant you know you can definitely taste the difference in it i i like to say you can taste the love in my chickens yeah. you know? <laughs> no, no. i mean when you care for animals and you give them high quality food and you know a, a somewhat simulating environment it makes for a better quality food because they they have a a higher quality of life and when you put stress on an animal, I mean, you can. This has been done and proven scientifically. When when animals live in a more stressful environment, they don't, they don't, they don't convert weight, feed well. They don't wind up uh, healing properly if they get injured, and the quality of the meat just isn't there. Well, absolutely, and we we've got Adriana online with us today, saying that uh, she was raised on your your family's products. So another another endorsement for uh, what Thank you guys you. did, and it's a shame that uh, it it could not keep going in perpetuity. But I, yeah. I get where you're coming from. Just the last couple of years with the apocalypse and fuel prices going up, the the cost of feed has become so astronomical. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to my move here in a few weeks where I'll have a lot more pasture and I can have uh, more more uh, natural feed and not have to have everything brought in on a truck like I had to do here in the, the barren wastelands of Nevada. <laughs> no, I understand having things brought in on a truck. Like the water situation in California has been so bad. We used to have to literally be, bring tankers of water every day to our ranches to supply our birds. Oh yeah, and, and surprisingly enough, them critters can drink a whole lot of of water and and eat a whole lot of food. So yeah, um, and if you have a problem with runny guts, mix in some uh, powdered milk. Believe it or not, it'll actually help fix that. Interesting, you say that because we're actually looking at a chicken that uh, is known for the quality of their meat, and you start them out on a dairy diet. So uh, when when we can, we're trying to get them. They're not that easy to get, but uh, they're supposed to be a, a primo meat chicken. We'll give it a try, but we're not going to go away from industry standard yet. But uh, we'll see how that works out for us. Uh, we still have one more second or one more section to go. We're, we're coming up on another break. We're about 15 seconds away from that. Um, oh, gosh. Uh, 
Oh, uh, Bob chimes in again. He says the product from Arkansas is not even close to the quality of Zaki. So there you go. We keep Thanks, getting Bob. endorsements for you, Leo. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> but there's the music. We've got to take our break. One more section to go, folks. Stick with us. More to come. Hi, I'm Noreen Leary, CEO of the Veterans Guest House. Guest House is a home away from home for our veterans and their families who travel to Reno for medical care. Our house is more than just a warm bed. It's a place of camaraderie where veterans can find support and long-lasting friends. We serve veterans, men and women, young and old, Navy, Army, Marines, Coast Guard, and Air Force. Wherever they hail from and whatever their circumstance, the Veterans Guest House is ready to support them. The reason we feel so strongly about our mission is that we know that many veterans would forgo their medical treatments because they simply can't afford the accommodations. The guest house is one of a kind in the country, funded entirely through private donations. Want to know how you can help? There are many ways you can be involved, from volunteering, providing dinners, or supplying items from our wish list. Find out more about the guest house at www.veteransguesthouse.org. Serving veterans today, tomorrow, and for years to come. Have you, a friend or family member, been diagnosed with cancer? Dr. Forsyth at the Forsyth Cancer Care Center offers an all-inclusive program to treat adult types of cancer. The Forsyth Immune Protocol Cancer Treatment Plan, in a current prospective study of over six and a half years and 1,200 adult cancer patients, has produced a remarkable 30 times greater survival statistic when compared to conventional full-dose chemotherapy. Greater than 95% of all their patients choose low-dose insulin-potentiated life chemotherapy Therapy, using only 10 to 15 percent chemotherapy dosing with insulin. Dr. Forsyth has long been considered one of the most respected physicians in the United States, particularly for his treatment of cancer and the legal use of human growth hormone. Located in Reno, Nevada, Dr. Forsyth has seen patients from all over the world. To schedule your consultation today, call 775-827-0707. That number again is 775-827-0707. The Delta and Bonanza Saloons in Virginia City are simply elegant. Imagine ascending the grand staircase and being surrounded by the Victorian elegance and grandeur of the historic banquet rooms. Original crystal chandeliers, mahogany bars, and oak dance floors highlight the eloquently appointed spaces. A truly romantic and unique setting for your wedding, banquets, or holiday parties. Detailed ceremony and menu planning ensures your special event is a memorable occasion. With just one call to Jesse at 775-847-0789, all of your arrangements will be handled by their experienced staff with your every expectation in mind, including cakes, flowers, photography, videography, music, and party amenities. Complete ceremony and reception packages are available as well as their famous themed weddings. Since 1865, the Delta and Bonanza Saloon's guests have come from every state in the union. Now it's your turn. No event is too large or too small. Let the Delta and Bonanza Saloon plan your next incredible event. Call Jesse at 775-847-0789. Want to expand your advertising dollar? Sponsor this or any America Matters program by calling 775-827-8900, extension 2. Now, back to the show. Welcome back, folks. We are in our final segment here with Leo Zaki. And, Leo, i got to share with you, uh, during the, the break, um, Judy... Uh, chimes in that she agrees with Bob's comment about uh, the quality of the chicken <laughs> and uh, nothing compares to, to what you guys have. And I'll tell you, Judy's an authority. Okay. Cause uh, she's, she's had my turkeys and I, I think at some point in time, maybe my chicken. So she knows quality and uh, trust me, I I'm working on methods of, of once I'm set up in Missouri, how I'm going to get Judy a, a turkey from out there every year. So uh, okay, we're, we're going to, I've, I've shipped them all over the country. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're going to figure that one out because uh, Judy and Wayne are, are some of my favorite people in the whole world. So we're going to, we're going to get them taken care of, but I, I do want to come back to something that you had uh, said. Oh, before I get to that, I, I got to tell you for anybody watching the feed during the break, we, we had a little bit of a laugh here in the studio. We were, we were talking here about how, uh, 
folks may not have noticed, but for some time now, just about every show, I try to work in the, the words farting cow in some way, shape, or form. And I kind of feel cheated, Leo, because you beat me to it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> and it's just because, I mean, it comes from your state. I mean, that's that's yeah. where, where that originated at. So I, I, you've got first rights to it. But <laughs> well. uh Anybody watching the the crack up here uh, during the break? That's that's what that came. But uh, <laughs> to to get back to um, what we were talking about uh, before I digressed, uh, you you talked about the quality of life and everything of the animals, and and it does it the the stress factor and everything makes a huge difference. And you know, I I go back to the the story with my daughter when uh, she first got exposed to the harvesting process of chickens, and and granted, you know, a, a small mom and pop operation backyard uh farm it's it's pretty easy to take your time but you know um yeah the chickens are allowed to run loose and and act like chickens for the time that they have on this earth and and then yes we even go to the point that we when we're we're harvesting we take them away so the 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 remaining flock can't see what's going on so we want them all to have one final surprise you know <laughs> Right. Right. <laughs> you know, but we do it quick and, and and as painless as possible. And this is what I explained to my daughter. You know, we we give them a good quality of life. Uh, we 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 make the process as quick and painless as possible. And uh, and and throughout the whole process, I think it gives you raising them from chicks up until the time you see them sitting on the dinner plate and you're getting ready to uh, smack your lips around a nice piece of chicken. You know, I, I think it gives you more appreciation for your food when you see it and through that and walk it through that whole process. And, and, you know, kind of back to the beginning of the show where I said, folks might be surprised it's not coming from the frozen food section or, or the McBurger joint, you know, it's, we've forgotten where our food comes from. Yeah, we have. And uh, it's, it's something that if people really saw the process and understood it better, that there'd be more appreciation for it in the industry and the jobs and the, and the time that, that goes into it. Because uh, you know, so many people just think that, oh, it comes from the supermarket. The reality is before it even gets there, I, I can guarantee you about 50 hands have touched that piece of meat. And that's not, a, that's not to, to gross you out or anything like that. I'm just saying there's a lot of people that are involved in making this so simple and convenient uh, for everybody in their daily life. Uh, you know, and that goes all the way from the people in the hatchery, from the guys who load the trucks with the eggs, to unload the trucks with the eggs, to, to putting them in the incubators, testing them, taking them out. Uh, I mean, all the way down the line to being eviscerated and then processed and packaged and then loaded on a truck. I mean, it, it it's it's really something that is is a tremendous feat. And there's a lot of jobs that are attached to that. And if you don't have these, uh, you know, you overregulate and you drive these businesses out or force them into automation. You're forcing people out of work. And that that's the biggest heartbreak of it all. Well, and you then you've got to consider the the peripheral uh, support positions. You know the 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 folks who are growing the crops that are being processed into the feed that the chickens are going to eat, and the truck drivers that are moving it from place to place, and and uh, all of that. So yeah, there's I mean huge, huge, huge job attached to. Your chicken farm. How's that? <laughs> you know, and, and folks miss that. And I, I know folks and, and I love them to death. And, and I don't expect everybody wants to be in the middle of the, the, the chicken poop and the, the evisceration process or the, the yeah, you know, any of A lot of people don't want to be involved. In it and that's, I'm good with that. That's fine. But, but there's people you all need to it. know where it comes from. Yeah. But there's also people who really take pride in their work. I mean, we were employing. We were employing people that were uh, father and son, husband and wife, all sorts of cousins, but they enjoyed what they did. We had members of our team that had been on for 15, 20, 25 years, you know, working on the lines and working on the ranches, managing the ranches. I mean, people take pride in what they do. And if everybody nowadays, especially the city slickers, you know, they all think they're going to grow up to be, a, you know, a movie star or, or a supermodel. <laughs> Uh, the reality is you're not. We're still going to need trash men and we're still going to need farmers and we're going to still need janitors at the end of the day. Uh, 
you know, but these, these folks that really enjoy their work and making these regulations harder on people to be able to provide food for the world, it's not right. And you're also limiting these people on their, on their working, on their work uh, ability. Well, uh, and absolutely. And, and the more we can raise awareness to, to what all is involved with food production and, and uh, get people to start thinking about it more, maybe, you know, there's, uh, I understand there's a need for some health and safety issues, but some of the stuff yeah. like, you know, uh, you know, catalytic converters and methane measures on the cows is, it just goes beyond the pale of ridiculous, <laughs> but, um, We've we've got a, a few minutes left, Leo. Uh, before we get to that, uh, Cassandra uh, again an endorsement. Uh, Zaki Chicken was always the best. Um, and Cassandra, if you're listening, uh, sometimes the internet is slow. I see it lagging a little bit on my phone. But uh, if you do miss anything, the podcast will be up later today. You can always go back um, so you don't miss anything from the show. Leo, in the in the last couple of minutes that we have, what's next for you? I know you mentioned at the beginning of the show you, you do intend to run again in yeah. uh, 26, hopefully uh, – little bit better outcome and you can get some of these ridiculous uh regulations dialed back but but what's the future hold for leo and for the zaki family um well thank you thank you cassandra for that um so right now the future is focus on uh how we're gonna win in 2026 i've got four years to getting to get this in shape uh i mean from a uh, you know family perspective gotta just make sure grandma's happy love her do everything I can for her. She's uh, 87, and uh, I'm I'm gonna want to make sure she enjoys uh, you know her time here because she's done everything for me and she helped create this amazing business and has given me every opportunity. So it's stay involved, stay focused, um, look at other business opportunities, and uh, just keep getting my name out there and letting folks know that I have a solution. I not not a solution. I have multiple solu- solutions for California when it comes to uh, wildfires, uh, wa- the drought, education, uh, crime, uh, there's th- and, and obviously the economy here in California. So I have all sorts of detailed solutions for that. If you want to learn more about me and about those, uh, you can go to my YouTube channel, which is Leo Zaki for Governor. You can go to my website, which is leozaki.com. You can follow me on all the social medias, which I, I hate social media, but, you know, got to – got to play along with it so it's a uh, leo s zaki or leo zaki on uh facebook twitter instagram truth social getter gab linkedin uh you name it but uh i'm here i'm running for everybody it's about bringing sanity back to california it's about common sense and uh you know if we can turn california around which i know we can we can help turn the country around so oh i know a lot of folks like to turn their nose up to California or when people say, oh, I'm from California, I'm a Californian, uh, the battleground is here and uh, don't call it a lost cause because it's not. Well, and I'll tell you, just to kind of touch back on what I had said earlier in the show, um, you know, a lot of what California does winds up becoming uh, widespread across the nation, if not uh, Im- implemented on a federal level. So, yes, California is very important. And, and a lot of the folks I know over on the other side of the hill, as we like to say, are, are in the farming industry, whether it's rice or nuts or cattle or whatever the case may be. So I'm sure they're looking for relief because speaking with them recently, they're all hurting whether it's drought or production costs or whatever. So we we wish you nothing but the best of luck in that pursuit, Leo. I hope that once we transition into Farmer Jerry, we can have you on uh, at some point after the first of the year. We're going to mm-hmm. we're going to show the world how we build a, a farm. So <laughs> all right, definitely document that and film it. Uh, that's going to be really cool. Well, that's that's why we're going to bring it to everybody live uh, every week here on America Matters. As as long as Eddie wants us us to keep doing it, and you never know, maybe there'll be a spinoff, and you know, we'll we'll have uh, keeping up with the chickens or something, you know, to compete with the Kardashians. <laughs> so <laughs> it'll be more interesting to watch the chickens do it, and and much I more agree. realistic. I agree. Well, thank you so much for today, Sheriff. I, I really appreciate it. Well, thank you for being on with us, Leo, and uh, God bless you. Folks, Christmas is coming up just around the corner, so uh, keep some kindness in your heart. And uh, remember, COVID is still out there lurking. So wash your damn hands. 
That's it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's what we got to do. And it's going to be around for the rest of forever. Trust me. They're talking about seasonal shots, just like with the flu. So don't get those. Don't get the uh, shots. Yeah. Don't, don't get them folks until next time. Be kind to each other and God bless. At a proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, we've been accomplishing happy feet for over 30 years. We offer a various range of shoe styles and sizes.